Now we can begin the third technical session, Robotic Process Automation and Simplant and Accounting IT. We have with us speaker C. Anand P. Jaggi. I request the SRC member C. A. Mahmoudi Deva to escort the speaker and present the Mahmoudi. So without much more ado, let me start the topic for today. Uh, thanks to Rafik sir and Babu sir for choosing this topic, it's very interesting. And the topic which is, we have been talking, uh, I'm sure you've heard a lot about this, is robotic process automation. I want you to do, all of you have your mobile phone, it's a post lunch session, so I want you guys to do some work also, right? Yes or no? Yes. I always get the postman session, I don't know why, but <laughs> I always get it. It's an indirect complaint to the fixer and Babu sir. <laughs> so, I thought, uh, let's do a small survey. Okay, all of you have your mobile phone with you? Okay. So, I'm going to put one site. Go to a site called www.menti.com and This is the site, menti.com. Give this code 889626. And because we are all finance professional here, I thought let me check out from you which area would get most impacted or more impacted by automation in the next five years. What do you think? No, 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 please vote. I don't believe you. Why was the 
four people only voted so far. Come on, you guys are better with your WhatsApp messaging, right? Are you getting some training on typing fast or not? 21 votes. Interesting. Interesting. 41 votes. That's great. Okay. Oh. I think 50 is a good number, population says. More people are voting, but okay. If you see, I really like who are the 4% others? <laughs> <laughs> I impatiently put that. And I really want to know what is that other. I really would love to, you know, speak to you. What is that other? Okay? Because all the other areas <laughs> which I put there is from my understanding of what I'm doing in this area that yes, accounting and reconciliation. Uh, anyone coming from an FMCG company or apparel's companies know how much is the problem with reconciliation even today? Do you agree or not? Between vendor reconciliations and supplier reconciliation, is it actually happening or not? How many are from industry here? Okay, so okay. Industry folks knows the pain point of reconciliation with vendors and other things because especially in FMCG and other kind of business areas. Accounting, even banks. even banks, banks are going to have a lot of impact on that because they don't, you know, there are chances, as so said, in CPS there are multiple ledgers don't match each other. Now, humanly, it's impossible to go with so many line items. But that is something which is whole. Financial review, oh my god, people are still voting. Okay, stop. <laughs> okay. Or don't do it again, okay? <laughs> so, auditing is 40%. That's interesting because uh, I have a couple of case studies which I want to discuss today and you will see this is really weird to change. <laughs> data analytics, amazing. But I am talking about automation and data analytics. See, you need to differentiate between that. Think of a situation where the machine does the analytics for you, not you. You have session with Rafik sir. I was actually going through it on the Facebook live link which Nasimam has provided. I was watching the whole session. So yes, you had a big session on analytics and Yes, but that's, you need to do it about. What about, think of stuff like machines doing analytics for you, machine making pilots for you, machine analyzing it from multiple dimensions and areas like that. Now this is an interesting thing. Uh, financial review, very less people, I agree. Financial review is one area where automation is not going to have a big impact. But when we talk about robotic process automation, are you thinking of something like robots coming and coming and doing just like we do accounting and other things such? Because I was watching one, you can go to YouTube and watch one uh, advertisement by SEMA, you know, another uh, body which basically does. And they show a robot walking and, you know, doing stuff. And then a SEMA certified person comes and says, can you leave my seat? And the robots remove it. And like they are trying to show that even if automation happened, SEMA is going to be there. That's like, we should also make something like for that. It's good. <laughs> The point is, this poll, I wanted to do to actually judge what we do. So as I told you, I have one hour, you know, I have a hard stop at 3, 5. I will try to make the best use out of that, trying to also break some uh, myths which a lot of people have. What if I tell you that all people sitting here in this room, okay, how many of you have recorded macro anytime? Raise your hand. Okay, so you all have potential to become an RP expert. <laughs> I'm not joking. Seriously, I'll show it to you. Like, I have a demo of UI path and just show it to you. Is the point is that there has been a lot of you know stuff which has been created like oh it's something tough. It's not. But having said that, let's first understand what it is and then try to get into this. Okay, so I'll keep this one and go back to my presentation. Here we are. Okay. Uh, so the agenda which I'll be covering today, friends, is on what is RPA all about, how does it impact us, and if you have gone through the agenda which has been published with the uh, point, and use cases and a little bit of them. That's the main idea which is there. And I'll try to make it as simple as possible. No, uh, I would say my objective of making this presentation was no very very high end complicated uh, jargons to be thrown around to you know make it complicated make it very simple and try to understand if it makes sense for all of us 
Is it fine? Okay. So there are a lot of jokes going on RPA right now. You can now see this. This is what people are talking about that RPA is something which is you know from auto plans to accounting everywhere it's going to impact us. And uh, I really like the other cartoon it says. It says that sure it seems harmless, but you hire one human and the next thing you know they are taking our jobs. So this is who we're talking about. Machines are talking about this, and that's something interesting. Uh, this is what's happening around us in terms of the related news. These are the points which are happening. Something like HSBC, you know, trade so is banking is something which is big on bots right now. What is automation? It's nothing new. It's there since 1946 when Ford Motor Company actually started with this whole concept of automation. And I hope you have seen this uh, robots painting car, the hand robot, like just paint car. That was like one of the big inventions of, you know, I can say Ford Motor Company. In fact, if you read about them in supply chain, they said the amount of money they spent on the making that robots, car painting robots, if you just put it on one side, the investment in research and development, they could have one point of time bought Toyota Motor Company in the US. That was the amount of money they have spent. So huge amount of money they spent. And this is actually there since all of the time. But really, now what we call about this robotic stock or you know, process automation, it's nothing but robotic means an entity which has a capability to, to mimic the human action. I would like to differentiate this from what we call as machine learning and big, you know other areas like artificial intelligence because there it is on a different side. Think of a situation when I am talking about robotic, you just mimic how a human will do it. Imagine a situation if you have to do a reconciliation, what you would do? You would go to the bank website, download the bank statement, then next step you will do, go to SAP, download the SAP's statement or whatever it is there and manually try to do it. Just try to see if you have to do a human. You know, it's not going to happen in SAP, you're not doing it. I'm just thinking of, imagine a situation like that. That's something which we are calling mimic the human actions. Process, we all know, it's nothing but a sequence of steps which you take. And automation is without human interventions. Now, the idea of RPA is also not new. It's actually a kind of idea which is there for a long, long time. Earlier, if you have been having you know, some understanding of ID, in information technology, if I have to change anything, I have to do a fundamental rechange. And uh, what happens is it's very expensive. Let's say you will never come across any company in the world which has gone on SAP and used SAP for two, three years, and then they will say, okay, we are going to change it to something else. Once they go, the investment is so big, they are not going to come out of it. And they become, you can say, addicted to that. Now you can't change fundamental things, but can you make use the same existing infrastructure and change the stuff? That's something which we are talking about in the same If you go for the definition or anything as such, sorry, it's not working. It's working, okay. It's basically what we call it as the use of software with some amount of artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities which handle high volume, and I want you to highlight this word, repeatable task. What we are talking about is not a task which requires application of knowledge or, you know, some kind of analytical skills. No, 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 we are not talking about that. We are talking about something which is like a donkey job. You know, you have to do it, there is no other options. Like, uh, how many of you have tried, if you have done data analytics, cleansing your data before data analytics? It is the most painful job. Don't you think so? Data cleansing is the most painful job because data analytics is a five minutes work, but to do that you may have to spend five hours in cleansing your data. So we are talking about handle high volume, repeatable tasks which has really required humans to perform, and that's what exactly what it talks about. And we also have an institute of robotic process automation, and they gave an interesting definition. They said any company that uses labor on large scale for general knowledge process purpose where people are performing high volume, like highly transactional process function will boost their capacity and save money time with robotic process automation because the whole idea is when you have a huge amount of data, you have a repeatable task and it doesn't apply a lot of application knowledge or analytical skills. That is the kind of area where robotic process automation. If you think robotic process automation can be applied when you do financial review, maybe not because that requires an analytical mind to go through it and see how it is happening. 
but can I use it in reconciliation, which is basically high volume and repeatable task which you have to do again and again? Yes. So friends, we need to understand, it's like you have been given a hammer, you can't use hammer for everything. It has for a special purpose, you use it for that kind of process only. Okay? Now, what it is and what it is not, or what it is I already explained, why I want to tell you is, a lot of time when I talk about RTA, people think, oh, it will be like, uh, all of you have been like, from your childhood, have you seen all these robot movies and all things, Star Wars and everything. It's not a humanoid robot, be very sure. No machine is coming, sitting on your desk and going to type it up. It is not something which can entirely replace humans. Don't think it is going to be taking away our job. It's basically to make your work faster. And it's something that replicates, this is what I was telling you, cognitive functions. Cognitive functions when I'm talking about analytical skills and when you're trying to do some stuff out there differently. And it's purely not just cost player. You need to also think, yes, Bangalore is a hub for shared services, you all know. So many companies in Bangalore and Hyderabad and Pune are shared services. Now, all of us understand it's the cost arbitrage why it basically comes out here. But, yes, it do provide you cost arbitrage, but it also makes your life easier, faster, and it can do the repeatable task because total cost of ownership of that whole process goes down. So this is basically what it is and what it is not. Uh, benefits, so these are all the basic stuff I just want to finish it up. The key thing which I really wanted you to talk about is only this one. Productivity and accuracy. In this room, we all are sitting. Tell me one thing, we all have understood one very interesting statement all the time. To err is human, you know. You may be very good, but if I ask you to do the same task 300 times, what's going to happen? Some places we will become basically, you know, tired mentally, you know, or like, okay, so you just want to just get out of it. So that's the kind of thing which always happens. That is one area where it is amazingly great. It will increase your productivity and all the accuracy which you can think of, it can be provided out there, okay? So let's jump to the second part of the thing. And second part, how business and IT is connecting for RPA? What is the key message which is coming out there? I want to tell you one thing is, the core benefit of what we are calling, there are another word, before robotic process automation, this is the word. So you need to understand, all these companies which are there, they will be always looking for one big uh, marketing word, okay? So earlier, before when it started, these companies were called intelligent automation. People didn't like it. So they came out with RPA, Robotic Process Automation. So the moment robot comes and all things, people are like really excited. So <laughs> actually, the idea is, is intelligent in automation. It's automating the whole task. How? Why are they calling it intelligent? Without touching your existing infrastructure, IT infrastructure. Earlier, if I had to do any kind of automation, I have to go and change your database, I have to change your process flow, do a lot of this connecting and all this blah blah blah. You don't have to do it. Just like a human do it. I don't want to change anything which you have. You are very good as you are. I will just come and do an automation which will be like a part of human way of doing it much faster, more accurate and the you know task repeatable can be handled. Okay? <coughs> So it's different from many other enterprise automation tools, as I was telling you. There are many things which have been taught. Enterprise, how many of you heard about this term called BPM? Okay, it's called Business Process Management. And if you remember, there are a lot of business process management tools that there, which will actually, you know, see your process, automate the process, or do something like that. But that, fundamentally, was a new layer altogether. It is like one more layer of softwares which are putting up there. Here, that is not the case. Here, friends, what's happening is, we are using the same infrastructure and techniques. That's one of the key things. It is different from how other automation technologies are and why people are adapting it as a phase, what you can see at a very, very fast pace. Okay? So this is one of the key things which we do. And no longer, this is one of the interesting things which I was actually talking to many people and they always say, the idea is, see this word, existing infrastructure without causing any disruption. People love RPA just because of that. Because, I'll, I'll give you from perspective, uh, you know, a lot of you from, I come from IT background. If I go to a company right now and talk to the finance guy, sir, I need to do this work for you. They said, I have to involve who? The IT team. And uh, people who are in employment or people who are in audit, 
Tell me one thing, how is your relationship with IDT? Good, bad, ugly? Or worst? So I said worst. See, no one likes them because they are the people who will create 100 troubles why it cannot be done. Like I do not think that one of the MNC, the you know, finance wanted some application on revenue recognition, it built it up. After the bill was there and we were just deploying it, he said, you know, IT guys have created one trouble, they have sent me a checklist of 300 questions which you have to fill it up and then do it. And we were not even touching any of their existing IT system. But because it is in their environment, they wanted to do it. That's the kind of thing. IT wants to have a domain. Why this makes life easier for finance team? I will not do anything on your IT. You just keep your IT how it is. You manage it up. I will just mimic a human way and automate the whole process. That's the reason the finance teams and audit teams worldwide are taking control of our team works, especially in finance and other areas. This is a typical architecture look like. I just thought I just try to give you a point. You can see there are you know uh, company databases, other their thing there, and this will be another database which is my RPA database. It is basically a kind of control room which everything is coming, and I am creating something called as bots. Now, what is bots? Bots are like small program, and I'll, we'll just try to create one bot if time permits. I have an interesting uh, you know demo. I wanted to give it to you. Uh, the idea is bots are nothing but something which can just do one task. A task can be reconciliation. Task can be going and pulling up some data from somewhere. Task can be knowing about related parties, disclosures, disclosures or anything as such. It can be any task and you can basically put it. This is how a typical things look like and it's multiple bots. When I say bots, it's basically nothing but programs or software programs which are doing some specific actions. And as you know, processes are nothing but collection of multiple actions which are there, which is to be taken care of. Okay? Uh, this is an interesting thing that more and more, you know, the investment which is happening in this area is growing at a fast pace. But this is one slide which I thought I'll actually discuss with you. Which or what is the kind of key test of which process is good for robotic process automation? If any of your process meet this criteria, then it is a good process for robotic process automation. First, high volume and handle time. The time taken is very high. Second, friends, prone to error. Uh, I hope you know there is a term called fatigue. If you do the same task again and again, and I remember uh, when I was doing my article sheet, this was to be there. You will try to tally a trial balance you know, in the manual books of account, and it will not tell you. So ultimately you will ask one of your friends to come and do it and within two minutes you will tell it out. The reason is you are seeing the, script, you know, the document for such a long time, you don't see the basic in front of you, there is an error which is there. So that's kind of thing prone to error. Standardized and mature, it's like a process is mature and you can basically do it. Manual and rule based, it's, it should be a process which is being done manually right now and there are some set of rules, step 1, step 2, step 3 has to be followed. And process adherence is important, if you don't adhere to the process, there can be compliance issues and stuff like that. So, if this is the thing, this is going to be the most easy stuff to do it. Another check is, is that process require something which I call mouse selection, going and selecting a row or column or something like that. Require screen navigation. The demo I'm going to show is a data grab from a screen, something like that. Field entry, entry into some forms, like pick up data from here and fill it to the grab there. Now, have you seen this uh, uh, crystal and other things which are there? They will go to the websites of the you know, SEBI or stock exchange, pull up the data out there, fill this data into their database, and then they will give you a kind of analysis, okay, this is the rating we are giving. A lot of data that to be captured. Then it requires copy and paste, control C, control V, and some kind of going to a database, like, okay, how many of you have issue with finding out current HSM number from GST and website? Happens, right? That's a kind of a big challenge. Right now, you know, there are a lot of companies which are going for that, but they want that in our Oracle database, I should be able to go pick up the you know correct HSM number and populate it up correctly. So this is a kind of thing, but humanly, if you imagine the kind of steps which you're done. Remember in costing we have heard about something called as time and motion study? Think of that time and motion study. Step one, open GST inside. Step two, search for that. Step three, do this. Control C, then put it back. There are multiple steps involved. I am again telling you, those are the stuff which we talk about out there. And logging and logging out of our applications. 
So I know the name is so big, robotic cluster automation, and what I'm talking about, you know, Eric, this is not going to make sense. Because what is the other part is already covered by Babu sir. That is machine learning and you know artificial intelligence. Yes, there is some amount of that is there in robotic process automation, but it's not there. And if you see, I'll skip this slide, I'll come back to this. Okay. I want to show you one slide and then come back here. Okay. Okay, this is the slide I want to tell you. This is actually from uh, you know sources PWC's research. And this slide is important because of one reason. See this thing. In near term, if you say which technologies are ruling, they say number one is RPA, basic AI is growing, and blockchain is something which is like in a massive stage. But mid term, next two to three years, what's going to happen is RPA is going to go down. The reason is there is a good development which is happening in AI. So RPA is a present phenomenon. It's going to be, I think. You have a kind of a life sign or like you know a hype cycle of next five to six years. RPA is going to be go because the technologies are changing very fast. Because when I show you the thing, you will see, ah, this is like very basic. Actually, it's very basic. But there is a kind of use cases are amazing because it can save a lot of tons of time and money for companies. And see the mid term, it's actually basic and intermediate AI will develop and blockchain will be still less. And in future, RPA is going to grow less. So while we are discussing it, there is a window of five years you can actually exploit that and it actually makes your life easier for the next five years. Don't you think it's a good window? Five years is a long term, right? Like we'll have Rahul Gandhi next year as a five years you can use it. Okay? Okay. So let me go back where I started that point. Use case is another thing I'll talk about. This I can talk to this later. The industry sector which are getting impacted by RPA are this. I'm sorry for the. Yes. Is, can you see the screen from the back? Okay, so let me actually explain to you. So, this is actually you can go to the site of Everest Group and download this report. And this report is a very interesting report. They are talking about which are the industry where the impacts are going to be very high on RPA. Okay? So, let me talk about something which is interesting. <laughs> Banking, so it's high potential. This is the color for high, and the other blue ones are, you know, the dark blue is very low, and rest of the thing are there. So you can see this is the banking sector, insurance, healthcare, manufacturing, high tech, energy, and utilities. You can see the maximum impact is happening on banking sector, and this is basically industry specific areas like car activations, reconciliations, what is happening in the transactions. All these things are to be looked into and managed out there. So, friends, this shows us what actually happening on this area and how it is going to evolve over a period of time. Just going to the banking, as you know, some said about banking, I can just give you one example of Danish Bank. This is one of the case studies which is there on RPA that on the cash operation and credit finance, they were able to reduce their back office cost close to by, you know, they were actually saying that number was 30% just by using RPA. So the cost is not about eliminating humans, it was basically making the work faster. So the same people who are doing, let's say 300 mm -hmm. uh, and transaction analysis in an hour, now they can do 30,000 analysis in an hour because most of the basic stuff is done by the robotic process. Yeah. Payment systems. Payment systems, that's the area where it's basically being used. Imagine the transactions, have you, how many of you have the, a Paytm account, okay? How many of you have seen your passbook in Paytm? Have regularly seen your passbook? Do you see some interesting entries there? Can anyone tell me how much is your cash back in Paytm till date? About? Okay, only one person. Are you sure? You'll audit it, sir. <laughs> but the point is. There are a lot of transactions that are happening. Have you seen a pay, you know, you can pay from 10 rupees to like say, you know, 50,000 rupees also you can do the payment. Out. The payment systems are actually big. The number of transactions are huge. And there are a lot of things which has to be looked into in terms of how it is basically working out. Compliances. Huh? Compliances. Compliances are another thing. So this is the use case of the payment system. Compliance And they have to do it. Like for example, okay, uh, anyone here from banking? No? Anyone has work or okay, service from banking, and anyone has done apart from sir because he has done it, I know. Uh, PMLA audit 
or any bank. Prevention of money laundering act. No? I hope you know there is something called as SAR reporting in banks. Suspicious activity reporting. And they use a tool called from FT for suspicious activity reporting. And you know what is the biggest challenge out there? For a bank, I'll not name the bank because we review it, but a bank based out in Bangalore, headquartered in Bangalore, so you know there are many out there. <laughs> the number of SAR generated on a daily basis are, you know how much? 40,000 SARs. Because there are so many suspicious activities which are being done. Now, all this suspicious activity, do you think humanly you can go and check all 30,000 and like 40,000 SARs and do it? You know what they are doing right now, or uh, before they went to the RPA? They were doing it in Excel, there will be a chartered accountant sitting there. His work is like he will make one rules, one macro in Excel. He will try to see it from his. If the macros are meeting some of the criteria they have already set, it will be removed. So it eliminate, let's say, out of 30,000, around 22,000 will be eliminated. But they cannot do anything in the system, they have to do it in Excel. Once he has done it, then he will go something around, you know, another second level of human check. He will go line by line and see what is this transaction, does it look like. One full day of a chart accountant is wasted in going through it. End of the day, he will come up with maybe, because more SAR reporting is RBI is very angry with you. Uh, how can you give a solution? Yes, for sure. How much I can give a solution? Because that SAR reporting has to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. AI SAR has also resulted in that. So, this is the areas where you can actually do all these things automated. And I think I have switched off this. Another one going on, sorry. Now, accounts payable, accounts receivable, general ledger. Financial reporting, budget, and back office operation. All these areas are places where you can actually use RPA extensively. When I say extensively, my uh, area which I love the most is accounts table. Accounts table, one of the big problem statement is when you have a long term relationship with a client, have you seen the amount of entries which will be going and all things and other things? And manually you have to do a reconciliation and see what is that. And are we paying on account, are we paying, you know, bill by bill, there are a lot of issues which are there. And if you want to do a one-time cleanup and all things, you can actually play bots. Small bots which will basically go to SAP, pull up all this information, put it in Excel, run it up, and show you this is the final figure which you need to do that. And that's save time and effort for everyone. That's the objective which we are talking about and doing. Uh, I will not go, let me try to jump directly into the a small demo, I just wanted, thought I'll share with you and do it. Okay, whatever I'm showing you is a demo, don't think I'm promoting it. There are many tools which are there, there is group prism, there is automation anywhere. Uh, how many of you heard about something called as PyCon, UI Park? There are hundreds of tools which are there. Now the point is, all tools are good, but how many of you really want to make, get your hands dirty, just try to try it out? Anyone? Only one person, others, okay. So if you want to get your hand dirty and just try it, the easiest one which gives you a community edition is UI Park. Okay, they give you a kind of a community edition for learning purpose. But that box cannot be deployed in production environment. So don't try to like automate anything in for your client. You have to buy licenses and I think it's not very expensive also. You can actually go for that. But the point is, if you want to get your hand dirty, the easiest one, you have to just drop a mail. Or uh, you know, you have to give a mail ID to UI Path, one of the company which is there, and they will give you a community edition. And you can play around with that coming editions. There are hundreds of open source tools which are coming, but these are more, uh, I would say, uh, you know, structured in their approach, and they can actually be at more value. Okay. So shall we go? Just if you give me one minute to set it up, and then I can actually jump into this. Okay. Just give me a moment.
it takes little time to start because it's a little heavy application. So Okay, so uh, this is sorry, uh, UiPath Studio, and they have this. They will give you two things. One is they will give you UiPath Studio, and they will give you UiPath Robot. Robot is nothing but the execute like how many of you have heard of something called exe files, executable files. So these are the robots are the executable files. UiPath is basically the what I call as you know the design studio where actually you create everything. Okay. So it will look like something like this. Uh, and the beauty about this is you can actually have a library also. You can already have existing you know, tools which are created for account table and everything to me. Let's create one process, okay? So I'll make it a test one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let me put it like this. Test four, five, six. Okay. And I'll create an environment where we can actually do something. And if you see the table of how it is being done, you will find it very similar to any other data analytics tools or I would say Excel kind of thing. You can see this, you have a new sequence you want to create, uh, you want to run that, testing it up, you have something called as, how many of you have done macro recording, recording a macro, that's all. You can actually record something which we call as a macro, which is like what we call as how the, uh, you know, what you do on the screen the system will try to imitate the same thing. But you have to be very careful that you know exactly where you want to click, what switch you will be doing. It will be basically doing the same thing every time. So that's another thing. I like the data scrapping and uh, screen strapping option. Okay? Before that, uh, what if I tell you that there are hundreds of RPA tools which you can be using which are already there in the market. How many of you are using LC? Anyone? Lead Connect? So I'll just show you one bot which is interesting and that makes life easier for all of us, okay? So do you see this lead connect stuff here on the my browser? Okay, what it is, let me explain to you. So how many of you are very active on LinkedIn? Okay? And why do you use LinkedIn? To connect to new people. Whom you are, who actually matches your professional interest. Now I have the same kind of interest. But as you know, how boring it is to go to every person LinkedIn profile, send him an invite, and then wait for him and talk to him and all that kind of stuff. So it's a boring thing, right? Okay, how many anyone has got invite from me ever? No one. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. Okay, you will get very soon. Don't worry. I'm going to the next bot I'm ready is on chart on it. So on Lead Connect, I this is actually an environment which helps you create a bot. Now what is the bot I created for myself? So uh, because I am into consulting and other thing, I wanted to talk to someone called CFO. So I actually created can you see finance as a bot? <laughs> and this is active right now. And I want to show you the law. Every day it will send five people and invite on my behalf on LinkedIn. And I have set the criteria for that. Can you see this link? Oh, they are sending it from 1st of November, I am sending it. Okay? And what is the criteria? The criteria is simple. I want to talk to people in finance. Who are my target audience? So I actually went to LinkedIn and I did a search for finance heads. Okay? And the link, I just copied it there. Can you see that? If you just click on that, it will just open the list of all the people who meet my criteria. I am using LinkedIn to do that work for me. And then I set up this. This is like the first step. I said, hi, first name. It looked like we share some mutual contacts and work in the same area, risk management. Uh, I would like to connect to you. That's all. And I said that once someone accept my LinkedIn invite, wait for four days and two minutes. Why four days? It should not be kind of like literally, you know, die to meet that person. I want to do it around, say, or I can send it all those things can be done. Send him a message like this. Hi, thanks for the connect. 
and all for mutually you know beneficial networking. So I am in Bangalore. Let's catch up sometime. So they will respond back. Oh, I am in Chennai. It's okay, no problem. I, anyway, I was just connecting on LinkedIn, right? Now, what have I done? And you can see this one. I just kind of open it up for you. This is the link. It is a LinkedIn Connect link. I have searched for something and just open it up. It says finance head. Who are my second connect? Finance means I have people who are connected to them first, and these are the people who are the second level of them. So they actually give a list of all these things, and you see all these invites. I have not sent it. Who has sent it for me? The bot has sent it for me, and it's doing every day. I, let's see. We are Indians, so we like all the free things, right? So the lead connect gives you five invites free. So I also think there could be anything with much video because I don't have any kind of you know urgency to send hundreds in my video. So I am like fine, don't worry. You can do it fine. So it takes care of my work. I can actually this is like one sequence I created. I can have 300 sequence like item. I can actually say that after he accept send this mail, then he will do this, then you do this. Everything I can send them. What is this? This is a robotic process automation. I am not doing it. I I hope you got my point. That's the point which you need to understand. Robotic process automation is not nothing great. Let's see the same thing on a second tool. Uh, we were using which one? <coughs> okay, we are using uh, UI. Okay. So, okay, what example? Okay, I can actually do one thing. Uh, how many of you love BlackBerry phones? No one. <laughs> okay, how many of you honestly put your hand on your heart when BlackBerry was there? You always wanted to have BlackBerry, or in your offices, like, okay, raise your hand. I still like BlackBerry. I have one BlackBerry old phone still out there. I don't know. I like a QWERTY keyboard. Don't you think the typing was amazing? I remember the Infosys like your status symbol was fixed by who has the better <laughs> BlackBerry. So I'm going to show off here, right? All of this, like you know, walk down there. So let's do one thing. Uh, we'll go to Flipkart and search for BlackBerry chicken. Okay. So Flipkart.com, and I want to know all the prices relating to what we call as BlackBerry items. Okay. Now, can you see something here? This UI symbol is already there. This is actually a you know kind of an adding which I have to implement before I can do this. Uh, and this you can see it from in the studio. What we call as you know you want to use that. This is like you have to do a pre-setting up there. So I'll go there and I'll say BlackBerry. Everything on BlackBerry I want to see BlackBerry. Uh, okay, great. This comes with some colors, price. Let's say I want to capture all this price on a daily basis, and I want to you know see. I work for Amazon, and I want to know what are the listings which are there on that. Possible, right? One thing is humanly, I go and do it. Or second, I can build a small bot. So let's try to build the bot. I will use something called as data scrapping. Here you can see it's like a, you know nothing but wizard. Next, and I go here. Okay, I'm oh, sorry. I try to capture the whole of this one. No, I don't want that. So, where is this? This is the point. And this is my UI path abstraction wizard. So, I say next. And I'll go here. Can you see this total black back replacement thing? I'm trying to go. I'm not sure. Okay, sorry. This is. Let me do it once again. So this is a community edition, this kind of small small issues keep happening, it's free, so <laughs> you know that, right? Okay, so I say next, and I don't want to select everything. <coughs> now it should be good. I'm trying to capture the browser and extension is not enabled, so I need to do a small thing which is close this and restart my <coughs> okay it's here so I'll go do a data scrapping step one and you see this time it has come and because for some issue in the browser that time. He selected that. Next, I will go and the second line I delete. So it has called extracted the text one, extract URL, I said yes. Next. 
what it has done, it has actually gone and this wizard has extracted in this whole thing, you know, it's displaying 100, but I can have all the list items of where are this? Can you see the second one is S offline temper plus? S offline temper plus. Third one is SQ temper plus. SQ temper plus. It's actually going and collecting all the data. Now I want to maybe take the price money also. One is I just extract some information and put it in Excel. If I say finish, it will just try to push it at that. Whatever I want, I can actually do multiple things. Let's try the correlated data also. Let me try. Correlated data is price one. Okay. Next price. Okay, define the first, okay, ticket, no problem. I went down. You have to be very careful, the robots will, okay, these are all, you need to understand one thing. These tools are not intelligent enough. So you have to be careful when you are defining it. One mistake here that, in fact, whenever we are creating bots, the time creating a bot is very less. The time to make the bot test and make it more better mature I would say 50% of the project time goes into doing that so okay now I'm doing it let's see first no I do it once again this is the first line item <coughs> okay let me go back extract code data point number one point number two okay next now what do I got here? I got the item, price, that is the information I was looking for, am I right? I can just extract it up and do it. So did you see, I was telling you that you need to go do this, you know, it's like extracting, humans has to do it, you know, humans can also do it. And robotic process automation is just like saying the human task, can I just put it up with machines to take care of that. That is the whole idea behind that, nothing different. This is. I, I just want to show you that it's very easy. You download UiPath, play around with that, and they have their own learning, you know, things. Like the one of our best person who is actually expert in, uh, we use a tool called PyMom, has learned the whole tool by going to YouTube videos. He doesn't have even a certification. So he's learned everything on PyMom using YouTube videos. So it's not something great. Like anyone here got formal training of tally? Any charter accountant here, please let me know. ITT, ITT. No, <laughs> ITT, no one knows anything. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so, the point is, friends, I just wanted to show it to you. Robotic process automation is an easy area. It's there. Next idea is you have a thing. In your basic processes, you can actually use it and take that forward. But, having said the nicey nice things about this, let me tell you what are the challenges also. Okay? And the challenges are much more. What are the first thing? Okay, this is what I always say: mining gaps with RPM. The use cases which are there are multiple. It can be something which we call as procure to pay. You can have something on supplier onboarding. Why supplier onboarding is so tough? Okay, uh, just now for one of the you know German manufacturing company in Pinya. They wanted their SAP invoicing in a specific format. Okay, let me give you a use case which you can just understand it better. So what was happening is, they were using a international instance of SAP. So they were having an invoice format coming in a specific format. Now, one option was they can actually change it because they're one of the biggest customers wanted in a specific format the invoice numbers and everything. So what they want is, from the invoice which is generated, pick up some specific data, create a new number, make a new PDF with same data and store it and send it to us. That's the only thing. Now, one option would have been to do a change management in what we call as SAP. Another big process, lot of cost. Other thing is, they have, they just paid around 3 four lakh rupees and they had one RP, one bot ready which will do all these things for them. So that's the kind of, you know, area where RP is adding value to. I hope you understood the point that how it is basically changing that thing. You know, one change request for SAP, you know how much the cost is going to be because all the changes, consultant times and everything. On the other side, you have one thing which will take care of that and work it out. So, pressure to pay, supplier onboarding, you know, portal services, queries, contractor, okay. 
I will give you one more use case, very interesting. Okay, let me ask you one thing. Have you guys, uh, how many of you are from manufacturing industries? Okay, so in manufacturing industries, have you read all the terms of your machinery supplied and all things? These are called dollar and date terms. Now it means every time this will happen, then this will happen, this kind of things we will have to look into. Especially aviation is using RP extensively. What they did is, they have taken all their contract data and put it to RPA. And depending on the whole condition met, the RPA will trigger the mails or whatever has to be done, you know, preventive maintenance, whatever has to be done, it is all being published by the bots. No human intervention, you don't have to remember on the back of your mind, this is happening, not happening, and stuff like that. Others are record reports, supporting financial closure, data extractions, all these things can be done. And all in cash, I have seen extensive uses on daily reconciliations. And even large organizations are using this daily reconciliation is a big problem, so they are basically doing it. And on the other side, how many of you heard about something called as, uh, there is a new term, Call uh, it's actually a, uh, you know uh, interestingly building it up, but supply chain expense management. Have you heard about a new scheme of thing called supply chain expense management? What they are talking about is when you are buying from multiple supplier, do are they all supply on the same price? No. And all these things happen at a dynamic level. Can you be able to see what's the price going on on different things, compare it up and then decide it up? Humanly you can do it, but the time taking is going to be multiple. And they have to publish all this data onto their portals and all the things. So can we do something different? They are actually doing it out there in supply chain expense management and areas like that. And oh, this I told you, pitfalls. These are the two, you know, last one or two slides. I just like to take more questions and I have one more survey for you. Let's try to see if you, uh, you know, how after that you can tell me. RPA, lot of people has lot of misconception about that. So whenever I go and talk to clients, I get two types of clients. One, they said, Anand, we have budget, we want to do something in RPA. Kya karna hai, kush nahi Something we have to do, because we want to look cool. Okay? <laughs> That's one type of client. The second type of client have real problem, but uh, they are not able to, uh, what I can say, you know, make the problem statement clear. What is the problem statement? So that whether we can see whether it makes sense to use IP. Because there are other technologies like artificial intelligence ML, which is great. I already showed you that chart. If you remember, please remember this thing. I am again telling you, all of you here in this room, don't try to invest too much of time on RP. RP is good. It's going to be the next five years. But if you're thinking long term, try to see when there's a connection between basic AI and RP. That is going to be a long term view. And that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, we used Automation Anywhere, we use Prism, Blue Prism, we use UiPath, but I find PyMount very good because PyMount has a kind of a mixture of what I call as AI as well as RPA core. Or if you like to play with open source, how many of you use Nine? Anyone? K L I M E. Just like Knife is there instead of F M. So if you have, if it's an open source tool, you can actually play it on that. You can do amazing stuff using that. Both RPA and machine learning combined. Play around with that. See, I'm telling you, get your hand dirty. It's nothing, something great stuff all there. I'm really telling you, if we give our time, and I'm sure Babu Sabur and the presentation of Washington, as Charlie pointed out, we are the best people to be doing this. And that's the reason I'm telling you, you should actually do this. It's not something, it is like, did you go to an engineer to do some Excel macro for you? No, you did it like try uh, multiple times. First time macro was not easy, I agree with you. But we have done it, so this is also something on this. So the main thing is that you need to go for that, but you should be very careful where it fits. Don't try to put RP everywhere. Like you don't put the hammer for everything, right? Somewhere which is the work has to be done in a very precision way, there is a different approach you take. Analytical cognitive things, you should not use RP. So you should know where to use it. And second thing which is there is, freelance and accounts and auditing are the areas which are going to be most impacted from this. So we should be careful about this in terms of how we can take that forward. Because there are some areas I think in future you will not require finance guys to be even doing that. So in that case we need to be able to understand and take that forward. So in conclusion, it's a quick way, RP is the next 
you know, big thing which is there and it's a quick way you can actually start doing it. It's likely to longer, you know, stay longer. Five years is the timeline which has been given. Maybe it will, you know, technology by the way it sees, it may be for the next eight to ten years also. <laughs> and it's going to have a lot of changes in finance which is going to happen. Let me take one more survey I have which I just wanted to discuss with all of you and then we can uh, take question and answers. So, same site, go to menti.com and go to After going through this presentation, do you plan any, any process post the meeting today? What do you think? In your, I am telling you, you would be having a more idea because I am just telling you what this tool can do. Don't you think in your formal statement, you will be able to think, okay, these are the areas where we can actually use what we are doing manually. We can actually use our Okay, not yet sure, amazing tool. Yeah. Okay, great. We had 17 people that time. This time, very less people are voting, no problem. Not sure yet. Okay, good. No problems. But no one said no. I'm happy about that. Because are we going to be used in multiple places? And this is the area which I think has a future. I would say in the uh, next four to five years, RPA would be like every computer we have now, Excel, when we are a CA and all the things you will find a future state where every machines will have a, you know, I would say a tools like UI path or any of this so install in that which you can play with that. I still remember uh, when Tableau as a data visualization tool came initially, not many people are using it. But if you go to any company today, in every machine there is Tableau license which is installed and you know, it's taken for granted. So that's the kind of thing we are going to see out there. Thank you very much. Any questions, feel free. No okay. Anyway, said you ask it straight because he won't be here for the panel discussion. Yeah. So yeah. No okay, questions. Leave now. All clear? Oh yes, sir. Please. Generally, with every technology introduction, the business and commerce. Sir. There have been security issues. Okay. Right. And in the previous session, as well as in this session, can you comment on what? What level of security uh, adaptation or maturity are we seeing in these new technologies, artificial intelligence as well as or Okay, a good question. Sir. That's a real good point. So I'll give you both sides of the story. I'll give you from the user's perspective of people who are using these technologies and what is the response from the environment. Okay. So let me put it like this. Let's put on this side. The moment this technology came into picture, people started using it. As I told you earlier, okay, I think like, uh, you know, in uh, my previous organization, we used to word, use a word. IT departments are like mafias. Okay. With all due respect, anyone from IT department know, right? Now there's a lot of chartered content are becoming CIO, so I have to be careful when I make this statement. But IT departments are like mafia. They want their territory to be controlled. They don't want to give a lot of decentralized power to users. They want to know you want anything, it's an enterprise version, come to us. And they will talk about it. And security is the right concern, I agree with it. That's true. But having said that, friends, you need to also understand the other side of the thing. Now, Excel and other things have become like a what we call as desktop applications. You just read, put it up there and do it. So when we go enterprise-wide, I showed you the you know the, the whole chart. 90% of time we have to get a kind of a sign off, a tick on the box from the IT department. But having said that, usually now what we are seeing with the advancement of the all the platforms, all of the platforms are doing amazingly great. It is becoming more and more of a what we call as DSS. Remember in our IT we learned about decision support system. It is actually you know, a very boring thing which was there when we were doing in IT SM and what is that called? ISCA. But this is becoming like a DSS. Everyone is having it. You decision support system, you can actually do the stuff which you are doing automatically and it's like on your desktop you can do whatever you want to do. But when you place it in the enterprise, yes there are security concerns because imagine a city. In this case I just opened a, you know, from my browser and did it. 
Imagine which IP address will be going out, where, how we are going to allow the bot to go out from the IP address, what it can do. Is it doing some badmashi also? It can do something else also, right? Possibly. That's one thing. This is one side of the story. Let me give you the other side of the story, which is very interesting. Do you know LinkedIn has stopped scrapping all their website? Like the way I did it on Flipkart, if I try to do it on LinkedIn, it will give me error. So the sites are made scrapping proof. So that people like us can't do that. So there is a response coming from environment because, uh, okay, how many of you heard about dark web? Okay. So on dark web, you can go and buy the complete LinkedIn database. There is a guy in Pakistan who is selling it. Pakistan is always famous for all these things. They are amazing friends of us. And there is a guy who is selling the complete LinkedIn database or whatever you want for close to around $1,000. Well, how he has got the data? By scrapping. He has put this awesome scrap, 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 put all the data, get the information, build a new database, which LinkedIn would have taken a lot of time to do. Don't you think so? It's, it's right on that part also. So there are response coming, which is tough. Now I'll give you one more example. Uh, GSTN website and TDS CPC website. So we do, uh, we, we did automation of that. Now TDS CPC website, you know there's something called CAPTCHA? Okay, so the, it's not tough. In robotic process automation, there's a complete database of close to around 3000 data uh, CAPTCHA which is there on TDS CPC website. So we were able to, you know, make the system learn using some machine learning and now we have all the capture. So now, we can actually go. So, it's recording. So basically you can go, anyone can go, right? If anyone can go, and get it done. But GSC website is tough to do it because the number of captures are close to 3 lakhs. So it will take a lot of time. So this is a chat, kind of both way things which are happening. Yes, security is important. And that's why you see all these things, are you human anywhere we go and cheap it up, right? <laughs> this is all because of robotic process automation, we have seen that. Okay, I hope I answered your question, sir. Okay. Thank you very much for a patient hearing and after four plus session, not sleeping in my chair. Uh, sir, please, sir. You mentioned about peak current. Yeah. Right? Using that. I have been trying to figure out how come I have been getting so many invites on LinkedIn. Right? <laughs> and I didn't realize that you, you could do things like this. Yeah. Till I got an invite from a very famous cricketer, right? <laughs> which I will not mention the name. Uh -huh. And I went and saw his LinkedIn profile. His total number of connections is five. I was going to be the sixth. <laughs> <laughs> then I realized that it was some fraud. It's not. See, no, I was. I would go to fraud. I'm not saying this is like automation. See, uh, I actually took time to know that I am targeting only finance app and I am not targeting everyone. Because see, what happens if I send random people invite? They will not accept it and my LinkedIn score will go down and then this guy is not trustworthy. So I only go to the people who are my second kind. You know, you saw the thing. Like, I have a connection already and these are the people who are my second kind. So they are, there is a common part between me and that guy. So that's kind of it. But yes, see, just like spam may happen, in this also people are doing this. You are right, sir. Because it's too much now. Right? I am telling you, this is LinkedIn is the best one in terms of that. There is one which says that you just put name, country, and anyone in this country, they will start sending <laughs> I'm not joking. Seriously, there are a lot of that kind of things which are there. So it's, it's, it's bad. So that's the reason uh, it was always, things are used for good purpose, but people use it also for bad purpose. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. For